Hello, uh, in this video I want to go through the web API settings, uh, the settings in the NLX activity regarding setting up the API for the for the web fronts. Uh, so from the role center we go, can go to administration and go to uh, the setup, the activity setup and edit and there we in the edit in the setup page we have a section called web integration so so first of all when you when you set up the the web api you have to set the the uh, the web service on you would have to decide on what on uh, the locking details so either if you're locking every request or if you only want to log errors or no locking so full locking is if you're just testing uh, the setup or, or and testing uh, maybe new functionality uh, but otherwise so you would normally just have the error lock uh, running uh, then you define the statuses to assign to the the bookings that are coming through the web api so this would be then the web draft this would be the initial status of the of the reservation in in the nav so when a web uh, reservation is confirmed it gets this status and when it's uh, finally paid it gets this status and if it's cancelled through the web uh, it gets, gets the status here so recommendation is to have separate web state statuses for for reservations coming through the web because that would give you an easy identification of basically of the source of the reservation uh, when uh, also here we have settings to how many days you show an availability or basically return availability for course products and class products so for all other products we are only delivering uh, one day of availability to the web api to minimize the the number of, of basically uh, number of records we are delivering to the to the front end but courses and classes are normally just very few entries so uh, and uh, so we can afford to send a lot more uh, days of availability for course products and class products then we have the currency code which the web front uh, is going to be using to to identify the pricing uh, so when we set up these we can go to the web block section click here on the web block section so in, in a running environment this the this would be showing us uh, the results of the locking so if you're having full lock we will get all lock all entries locked here where if we, if we are getting error lock only then we would only be seeing errors uh, identified by the solution and locked into the error lock but when we are this is kind of, it's also test environment to test uh, the web app, uh, api logic so from here we can actually run test entries through the, the 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 api we are not running it through the actual web services but we are running it through the same same functionality so they will behave exactly the same way as the the web uh, as the web um, orders so from here first of all if you go to the navigate sec section we can review how what is what is uploaded to the web and how it actually looks so we are uploading the activity types which we can click on here and we can then see the actual xml file how it looks and what is going to be delivered to the web front we can see the see the uh, upload locations upload promotions and upload products so if you click on all of these we are all it's all going to show us actually how the xml file is going to look like uh, we can also see sent to the web client bookings uh, client appointments and for the testing purposes i can just select some client here and it will show me the xml file how that that one looks so all these functionality here is basically to review uh, how the xml files are, are presented i can also click here on the web services 
section here and it will open up the standard now web services page and uh, it it will actually automatically register code un this code unit here ls activity web services and this would be then the soap url to access this function this functionality so this is just standard nav uh, where you actually basically set up uh, the web web services code unit uh, now i just want to make some test entries running through through the process and so here in the test entry parameter section i can enter uh, what kind of parameters are going to be passed on to both the uh, request for availability and then for the confirmation. So I'm just going to select some location here and now basically I'm emulating, uh, uh, going to emulate an entry coming from the, from the web. So these are the entries uh, which, these are the fields that we require so we require a location and the product and the date and we actually require also the client uh, so if i just hit now go through actions and I, I click on query availability i can see run this parameters basically through the availability engine and and see what it's going to deliver to the web so in this case, it's going to deliver availability for the Massage 30 product. And it's going to be sent like this pair resource because this product is set up to, to re, in the product cart to deliver availability pair resource. I can also see how this will look in the Navigate section here as availability. So that this would show me exactly the same but the, in the XML format, which is going to be delivered <coughs> to the web front. And here now we see actually the request that were sent to the web. Uh, so we would get logs like this a request and uh, the, the respond uh, and the status, uh, status and if any errors occurred. Um, now I have these parameters uh, in, in, and then in real life the front end would be passing these parameters to the back end and returning, uh, getting availability returned in this XML format here. On the front end uh, would, you would have functionality to select uh, uh, a slot or a, or a reservation time based on this availability. And when you have that in place, let's just click on here availability. Oh, sorry. Go here to actions, query availability. And now I can actually select some pre slot. I'm going to select here five o'clock Friday, Benjamin Ford as the resource. Hit OK. And you can see the time was added to the request. And this is going to be then sent to the confirmation. Uh, uh, functionality. So if I hit confirm now, it, it's doing exactly the same as the web front would do. It would pass these parameters to the confirm functionality. And as you can see here, we sent a conf it's logging that we sent the confirmation request. It was a success. It created this appointment here and it uh, is uh, the status of the state and we are actually getting here <laughs> the email from the confirmation and uh, we can see here actually it, it was successfully confirmed and uh, and uh, and actually at the same time then the email was sent off to the to the client in this case my email was the was the confirmation email uh, receiving the confirmation email so this is basically a test environment where you can check out how how these uh, parameters are sent to the front to the to the web api and see how the locking features will, will respond so of course if you would then connect this web, front, uh, web API to a front end or using dynamic web as a front end, you would be getting the respond the respond lock to, to this section here. Uh, so this uh, concludes uh, the the overview of the web API.
settings and and uh, how you can set up the the web uh, web API in in LS Activity.